Hey everyone. Yes, I have the camera pointed to my TV because that seems to be the problem today. This is about a four-year-old Scepter TV, 40-inch, non-smart TV. And it was good. It was cheap. It was from Walmart. And for the most part, it still works beautifully. The picture is good for a cheap TV. And the functionality is great. There's only one problem. When I take the remote control and try to turn it on, you can see the sound bar turned on. But below the scepter, which you probably can't see really, is a little red light. It's supposed to turn blue and turn on. Well, sometimes it'll take a few seconds. Sometimes it'll take a few minutes after I send the infrared signal. Sometimes I gotta hit it again just for it to wake up. Once it wakes up, it's perfectly fine. Like if I try hitting it again. Yeah, still nothing. Sound bar woke up again. Let me do it this way. But, yeah, it could take... Another minute or two until it finally wakes up. And we'll keep going until it wakes up here. See, there's a sound bar. The sound bar receives the infrared perfectly fine because they use the same on code. It's also a scepter. There we go. See, it just turned on. It turned blue. So it do, it's not supposed to have that delay. And it's only done this recently. And now you can see it power perfectly fine. Now, of course, if I uh, switch over real quick to RF and turn on... The shield, there you go. Okay, well, apparently my daughter was watching it last. So, the TV itself, once it's on, works great. Well, apparently, from research, the problem with the TV is there's a double EEPROM chip on the logic board that goes bad. So, what I ended up doing, after doing a little bit of research online, I found it through um, Amazon, although apparently the uh, site has its own website as well. Let's see if I can refocus here. Come on. There we go. Shopjimmy.com does a lot of TV parts. And, yeah, there you go. Shop somewhere in Minnesota. And this is a Scepter X405BV- all that other crap. Main board UF1 double EEPROM only chip. And that's why I ordered them for $15. And hopefully, if I get enough light in there. Yeah, there you go. There's a little EEPROM chip. It's a little 8-pin. So what we're going to do today is take the TV apart, get to the logic board, replace that double EEPROM chip, and see if it fixes this issue. Because I'd much rather spend $15 to fix this TV than to go spend another $300 on another 40-inch TV. Especially considering I want a non-smart TV, because I already have the NVIDIA Shield, which is glowing green right there. So let's get this out of here and onto the kitchen table, because this is definitely not going to fit on my uh, bench down down in the basement. So let's open it up and get started. Okay, so I got the TV laid down. You can see a little bit of dust on there after four years. So yeah, the TV is about four years old. So first, let's get all these screws out of here and then we'll use uh, some spudgers to uh, open it up. Okay, thank you for this TV. You don't actually have to take the whole thing apart. They actually put the logic board <clears throat> external to the actual screen itself, which is beautiful. So, the chip we're having a problem with, which is probably going to be hard for you to see right now, let me unplug this, it's actually right here with a little red dot. So, let's get this board out of here, and we'll take this down to the bench, and we'll actually replace this chip. So, now that I have the logic board mounted in my circuit board holder down in the bench, here is the affected problem. Here's the double E prompt chip right here, the little red mark. This is the one we got to replace, that made by UF1, which was also on their paperwork. And here's the replacement, exact same package. And before you do anything, make sure here's the pin one mark on this chip right there. And here's the pin one chip on the replacement. You can barely see it. So make sure you got the orientation correct before you pull the other one off in case they didn't mark it in silk screen. Although they did a pretty good job of marking this one. So let me get this replacement chip out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use hot air from the underside and heat it up enough so it comes off, clean up the pads, put a chip back on there, and then we'll reheat again on the bottom. Because so I'd rather reheat from the bottom than using a soldering iron because soldering iron just makes a mess out of this stuff. And if I use a hot air on the top, I risk damaging all the rest of these components, especially melting all these connectors right here. And it's just safer. So let's get with it. I'm going to do a massive tip job here. 
turn on the hot air. On the bottom side, there's a uh, plastic just like this on the back of the RF connector, which I never really use anyway, but actually, wait, does it pop out? Oh, I can remove, I can temporarily remove the whole RF if I, yeah, let's remove the whole RF because that plastic is melting on it. The RF adapter is just a serial adapter. Okay, there goes the plastic. If I can just unplug, there we go. Oh, okay, it's a 15 pin. Interesting. Yeah, but that's your RF adapter, which we never use anyway. I will put it back in, but that fixes the problem I was just having. So now we can tip this a little bit more and heat up that area again. I don't want to mess up that trace. There we go. It looks like I did mess up a trace. Okay, let's put this back and take a look at it. Yeah, that trace looks kind of bad. Oh no, okay, there's still metal there. Okay, good. It looked a little too white like I got to substrate or something. Okay, let's get the soldering iron and clean up those pads and put some fresh solder on it before we put the other chip back on. And yep, I got the right tip on here. So let's heat that up. Okay. okay, here's the orientation. Okay, let's put some captain tape to hold it in place. There we go, that should work. Now let's reheat it again, and that should hold the right in place. You can see the heat already working through the board somewhat because the flux is boiling off there. We're just waiting for that. There we go. See, it just sunk down. And we can remove the heat. There we go. It's re-soldered. New chip. Now I just gotta do cleanup on it. Yep. And there we go. We have a nice, good replacement. So let's put it back into the TV and give it a shot. So here is the uh, fixed circuit board. There's our little chip that we just changed out that you can probably barely see right now. So let's put it all back together and give it a shot. Okay, so we got the TV back in its box, all set up. So let's go ahead and try again and turn both the sound bar and the TV on. Worked immediately. And this is the first boot up since we put that chip in. So there we go. We got the scepter. And it's not in English. So apparently whenever they copied the uh, original um, the Lee prompt from wherever the donor was, it's in a different language. So let's go back to good old English. If I remember how to get to it. I think it's an enter button on the factory remote. doesn't like to work very well. But, yeah. The factory remote is always junk on this thing. The center button never works. So I'm going to do it by the keypads. But, either which way, the TV is back working perfectly fine. That's how you fix it. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. If you did like it, you know what to do, but I don't know why you wouldn't like it. And I'll see you next video.